Security is a critical concern for any web application. A secure app must prevent unauthorized database operations, as well as validate the integrity of incoming data. Firebase allows you to define database security logic in a JSON file that corresponds to the structure of your database. A NoSQL database is essentially just a series of nodes, and each node can have its own validation and security rules. For example, you might have some data that's accessible to everybody that visits the site, or you might have some data that should only be accessed by authenticated users, or other data that's only accessible to the user that created it. In this lesson, I'm gonna go through all these different scenarios and show you how to implement these as Firebase database rules. You can define Firebase rules directly from your Angular project or from the Firebase console. Personally, I prefer using the Firebase console because you can send test requests to make sure that your rules are working properly. There are three types of rules you can set, read, write, and validate. Read controls access to data. Write controls the ability to create, edit, or delete data. And validate controls the format of data. You can use any combination of these rules together or none of them at all. There's also a series of variables that give you access to Firebase resources. Auth gives you access to the user authentication state. Root gives you access to the root node of the database. Data gives you access to the data as it appears before the operation takes place. New data shows you how the data will appear after an operation takes place. Now gives you the Unix timestamp for the current time. There is also a wildcard variable that you can use to reference any child key throughout the database. Now let's run through some of the most common security scenarios that you might run into. First, we can just disable all security so anybody can read or write to the database. We can put everything on lockdown to where nobody can read or write to the database. We can limit access to only authenticated users who are currently logged in. We can also limit users' access to only content that they created. Um, we do this by using the wildcard variable that we talked about earlier. Um, in this case, we have some data nested under a user ID. So we can then reference that user ID to make sure it matches the current auth ID of the logged in user. In this example, we're only going to allow users who have been flagged as moderators to write data to the database. We do this by first setting a moderator variable to true somewhere else in the database. Then we use the root variable to traverse to wherever that point is. You can also use Firebase rules to validate the integrity or format of incoming data. In this case, I'm validating that some input is a string and that it's at least one character long, but less than or equal to 140 characters. The now variable allows you to validate whether some data falls within a certain time frame. In this case, we're checking to make sure the post doesn't have a timestamp that falls at a future time. You can validate that new data has certain child attributes by calling the getChildren function and then passing it an array of the attributes that you want to check. Lastly, you can validate the existence or the non-existence of data before performing some kind of operation. This is useful because it allows you to control whether or not a user can create, update, or delete some data. A common pitfall with Firebase rules is that once you grant access to a resource, it can't be revoked somewhere further down the tree. So you always want to err on the side of caution and only grant access when a specific set of conditions have been met. So in this example, you can see that we granted access initially, but then tried to deny access later in the tree to only authenticated users. When we run a test to this rule, we see that it fails and it grants access to the user that should not have access. So when we reverse this around and deny access initially, we can see that the rule then does work when we send the corresponding request. That's it for database rules. 
Thanks for watching.